What level of success would it take for Mike McCarthy to get a new contract mm. in Dallas? NFC Championship game. Yep. Woo, yep. Period. Stop. Anything sh anything short of that, the experiment's He's a wrap, right? And uh, the same thing could be said for Dak Prescott. We've talked about that contract so many times. Uh, and I was reading some stuff down in Dallas-Fort Worth uh, uh, paper yesterday about why they think it actually makes more sense for the Cowboys not to sign him now from a cap standpoint. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but this has been an experiment, yeah. right? The answer was Jason Garrett, good enough to win a lot of regular season games. Uh, some of those with Tony Romo, of course, yeah. some of those with Dak Prescott, but just not quite good enough to get us over the playoff hump. So what do we do? Let's bring in, at the time, this may be shocking to some of you, Mike McCarthy was him when he was uh, out of a job and there were teams looking for a new head coach. Correct. I know here in New York, uh, Giants fans were dying to get Mike McCarthy in yep, here. Yep. Matt Rule as well back then. Uh -huh. So good thing they didn't get Matt Rule, obviously. Because <laughs> that didn't work out. But Mike McCarthy was the, the hot girl at the prom. Yep. And it hasn't worked out. So this is a, for my money, NFC Championship game or you're not coming back. Because five years is enough time for a head coach to now leave his indelible mark on a franchise, and it's been the same old, same old with the Cowboys. And sure, we can attack Jerry Jones for personnel decisions, and sure, we can say Dak Prescott isn't the guy in the postseason, and I think we are saying factual statements with those two things, but there's also a coach who has to bear some responsibility. And when you add the fact that he took over play calling duties from Kellen Moore. Now there's no more excuses. This is it. Yep. This is your last shot. And I, I want to be clear about it. I'm not saying they have to go to a Super Bowl. I'm not saying they have to win a Super Bowl. But these first round exits yep. in the postseason got to come to an end. And I'm glad you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Jason Garrett because you got to understand when Jason Garrett took over for three seasons, he's, he went eight and eight, right? And they were, he was pretty much cleaning up Parcells and Wade's mess. At the end of the day, once they got the offensive line established, that's when the Cowboys came along. But overall, you talk about a franchise right now, they want a quick rebuild if Jason, uh, Mike McCarthy's not at the helm. So I think they're preparing for that. But Mike McCarthy, it's all or nothing at this point. I think he's telling his team, we don't have the pieces we and had last year. And then here's what becomes interesting on that. You know, if, they, if this goes south for the Cowboys, you, they have to make uh, a couple really big decisions. One, of course, Mike McCarthy. I think that's the easiest decision. He's probably gone. Yep. Number two, of course, will be on Dak Prescott. Number three, if they haven't re-signed CeeDee Lamb, those are the big three for this particular uh, offseason. But if it goes south, Willie, yep. you just said something that, that made me think. The Cowboys would not be a good destination no. for the next hot coaching candidate because mm -hmm. you there's the potential that you'd be going to a squad without a quarterback yep. and without their best wide receiver. Mm -hmm. They don't have a great running game. We know that because they don't have a stud running back anymore. And the cupboard then becomes bare sure. very fast, Vic. Yeah, and you don't want to be that rebuilding coach under Jerry Jones because as soon as that team gets to a place where they're going to be good, he's going to be looking for that next hot coach mm -hmm. to take them sure. from point A to point B. I'm interested in what – this team's going to do because I'm a little worried. They did nothing in, in the offseason right now for a splash kind of kind of change in their offense and what they're doing. Now, there was a change in Dak Prescott's play when McCarthy took over the play calling, which was positive. But, look, McCarthy's 11-11 in the playoffs. Like, that's not going to cut it in no. Dallas. And then if you go another step down the lane for them, if you're Micah Parsons, you may not want to sign there. <laughs> yeah. Now, money's money. Yeah. And when you have a big number in front of you, I recommend we all take it, the by the way. The market's the market. Yeah, yeah but if you're Micah Parsons, you might say, you got rid of Dak, you got rid of C.D. Lamb, you got rid of Mike McCarthy. Why the hell do I want to be here? Yeah. Trade me. So the, it is not a good situation it's, for the Dallas Cowboys. And to answer your initial question, they've got to win two playoff games. It's a huge prove it year for everyone because when you, you look at what Mike McCarthy has done in his tenure with the Cowboys, it's not bad. No. It's like, it's like, that's pretty successful. Yeah. You Compared I mean? to a lot of Until teams. you get to that bottom line right there. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's, it's 42 and 25. I think pretty much most franchises in the NFL would be celebrate that and you get an extension. But it's that one and three in the playoffs, which is really a thing for but, him. I, they can go 10 and seven and sneak into the and playoffs. To me, the, the Cowboys yeah. are in a very interesting spot that they were not in last year, right? So the Cowboys. Obviously, based on the Eagle collapse last year, the Cowboys steal the division, mm, yep. right? We haven't had a back-to-back -back division champion in the NFCs in 20 years now, which is mind-boggling to consider that. But I would tell you right now, unlike last year, the Philadelphia Eagles are in the driver's seat in this division. Mm. I think it's their division to lose. Agree. I think the Cowboys are chasing Philly. 
I think the Giants are chasing both of them, and who cares about Washington? Right. So, from a standpoint, we talk a lot about, you know, who's got the most pressure on them to win. Cowboys always do, sure. you know, by default, because yeah. they're the most popular team we get talked about the most. But they're not the best team in this division. Mm -hmm. I think talent-wise, the Eagles are. And I think it's the and I can't believe I'm saying this because I hate Philly. I know. I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at you like okay. that's why I told you've been you dancing that. on their face masks. This is why I've always now. told you it takes two years for you to understand this show. Because <laughs> I've always said that. I also say for job security. Uh, I, I, I told you that we need two years. Uh, but the reason is I, I'm never gonna lie to you. And I hate Philadelphia. But the Eagles are the best team in the NFC East. Wrap that up. Send it out to Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, that? Can't wait. What, what, you got anything else to go? Yeah. No. I'm going to break. Go to break. I, I, I kind of feel like I dropped the bomb. I should just go. Yeah. <laughs> but just, like, think about, like, what are the doubt? The Cal Stavis haven't gotten better. They lost their starting left tackle in Smith. They lost Tony Pollard. They haven't re-signed C.D. Lamb. They don't have a legitimate stud number two wide receiver. Solid tight ends for sure. But have they gotten better? They haven't. No. Now you've got a lame duck head coach, a lame duck starting quarterback, a lame duck wide receiver, and your best defensive players a year away from being lame duck. This thing's cratering. I just don't as know how you speak. But Craig, this is Go ahead. Hey, they're twins. Like the Eagles suck too. You talk about no That's secondary. Great. They lost Kelsey and Fletcher Cox. They yeah. don't have a pass rusher. They, you're talking about head coach right now. They don't even he doesn't even know what he's doing there. Right. He just knows he's filling a position. I agree. So as much as you talk about the Cowboys, the Eagles are in a lot of they're in a bad position as well. No, I heard something about spot. the Cowboys free yeah. agents. Yesterday there was a report that Ezekiel Elliott and Dalvin Cook are both interested in going to the Cowboys. Oh, oh, saving the see, day. I can see Ezekiel. Ah, saving that. the day. Saving the day. All right, so let me just add a name to that list. So am I. <laughs> Carries <laughs> uh, just as much water as those two guys <laughs> saying that I want to play for the. Not Eagles. a lot of combined yards. Did you see Dalvin Cook on the Jets in Baltimore? <laughs> did you see that? Fair. Actually, did, did you see that? They didn't. They didn't rip him off the plastic. Jacoby's right. I didn't see it because he can't play anymore. And Ezekiel Elliott is like a 53-year-old guy in a 28-year-old body. Why do you bury so many ball players? What happened? You put a lot of people in graves. You do? What? Yeah, you. You bury what? a lot of ball players. That, that because he's never got a chance to see Because the, the audience is tired of people on these shows lying to them. So I made a pact with myself. I'm never going to lie to the audience. Ezekiel Elliott's done. His career's over. It was a decent career. I don't deny that, but it's the Dalvin Cook one that bothers. Dalvin Cook's done. He never we got an opportunity. Stung. It's a wrap. He's he, still in the box. If he was any good, somebody would have played. If Dalvin him. Cook was Dalvin Cook, he would have been Dalvin Cook last year. No, yeah. that's not, not fair. Not in Baltimore. You're talking about yeah. under the helmet of Nathaniel Hackett? He should be working at Whataburger. He sucks. to the Ravens, <laughs> and they didn't use him. No. <laughs> hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.